Hey guys, as you can see, that's my BMW M2 competition right behind there. So I've owned the car now approximately three months plus, and I put on close to 8,000 plus kilometers on that car. So I think it's a pretty good time to do a little bit of a ownership review, talking about uh, how it's like to drive, how it's like to live with this car on a day-to-day -day basis, because that's my daily, right? I drive it almost everywhere I go. Um, and I swap my Renault Megan RS for this car over here. So did I regret it? Uh, was it a good choice? Was it a bad choice? I'll talk more of that, more about that in this video over here, and uh, I'll give you a little conclusion on, you know, how does it fare up with its competition in its price range. Okay, more of that in this video over here. Hey guys, before the video starts, I want to give a big shout out to my sponsors, Expel Malaysia, and I have some good news for all of you over here who are watching this video. Expel Malaysia is going to give us 25% off their new window tints called the. Prime XP window tints. This is only valid from the 1st of November 2022 to the 31st of December 2022. I've been using this in my BMW M2 competition and I absolutely love it. It keeps my car really cool because they use a multi-layered smart technology which utilizes metal flakes to reflect heat, reflect UV rays and keeping me nice and cool and safe in my car over here. Now the best part is this. I've used many international brands of window tints. This one over here has absolute clarity. It's virtually undetectable when you're driving your car. That's why I absolutely love it. I use them for all my cars. By the way, for all you viewers watching my channel, you're going to get an extra special deal as well. If you come to Expo Malaysia or any of their official branch, you can show them that you subscribe to my channel and like my video. And with that, you get an entitlement to the free Hitlam PPF as well. So with that, please enjoy the video. All right, so my car is a 2019 BMW M2 competition. Now, before we go and walk around, right about now, I'm going to slide in the clip of me driving this morning. It's like a vlog drive, so I'm going to just talk and drive about the driving dynamics. All right, All right so we are now in Genting Highlands. So uh, I'll do a driving review, talking about the driving dynamics, talk a little bit about the uh, um, comfort, the suspension, and then uh, when we get to a proper place, we'll just walk around the car and. Uh, Check out the interior, exterior, and what I feel about the space of the car, etc. etc. Right? right now, I'm gonna set the car for my spirit the driving mode. So I have my engine on Sports Plus, steering on Sports Plus, which makes it a little bit heavier. And I have the traction control on MDM, which I love in this car over here. This is where it gets really, really fun with this car. <laughs> Start the review. All right. <laughs> now, what's the character of the M2 competition when uh, you're pushing it around the corners? Now, first of all, this car is actually quite heavy. It's a thousand six hundred kilos curb weight. That's a lot of weight for such a small car, right? Now, my impressions of this car, um, it's always, the tail has always been a little bit looser and likes to brake traction more often than not. I think a little bit more the, than the M2. Now, is that a bad thing or a good thing? Well, it's the character of the car. I feel that the M2 competition um, allows you to drive it more on the traction limit and even if you break the traction ever so slightly, doesn't you know throw you in this oh my god I'm gonna crash kind of like feeling you know and uh, one of the biggest improvements they had in this car versus the M2 is the M differential it's much more well tuned to suit this car's dynamics which is a short wheelbase a lot of torque <laughs> so what's the result of this now for most people it can be kind of scary but if you know how to use that rear, you use your throttle to rotate your car. <laughs> and if you feel up to it, you can dump the throttle a little bit more 
and get yourself a little bit of a fish tail coming out of the corner. <laughs> so what I meant to say is that um, I like this character because when you push your car around the corner, you can either drive it with the nose, which is a little bit slower, means the weight is in front of the car and you use that to turn and rotate. That's a little bit slower because when the nose is down and then you're trying to uh, throttle out of the corner, the car will shift violently to the rear and that's when you see traction braking, especially when you're mid-corner. But if you're going to drive with the rear, you want to set up your car in the entry, you know, neutral, you brake more and you get yourself a nice entry angle. And then as you're entering the corner, you start putting some throttle in, trying to keep the weight of the car somewhere between, you know, the two wheels which is underneath your butt, right? <laughs> and then you can use that throttle to slowly rotate the car. And I found out that when you do that, you drive a lot faster and in the mid corner, you got a lot more options. Let's say there's something on the road, I can just uh, pull back on the throttle a little bit, I can steer my way out of uh, the danger. Or if I want to push my car out a little bit more, I can use the throttle to rotate my car. But the point is it allows you to carry momentum in, out the corner. The idea of driving the car using the rear, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's it's very, very, very addictive. Yeah, that's the word for it. And what I like about the chassis setup is that it tells you a lot. So you're willing to play at the edge a little bit more when the car is giving you a lot of confidence to play at the edge. And uh, in my opinion, that's what makes the M2 competition really, really good. This is driving dynamics. But the question is, is this for everyone? I had this little talk with Bobby when he was driving my M2 competition uh, a short while ago from Subang to uh, Taman Desa and um, I think that for most people if you're going to spend say between 380 to 400,000 for a sports car I would say that the 718 Cayman is a better car for most people because I mean first of all it's a Porsche and the fit and finish interior way better but when it comes to driving dynamics, you don't have to push the Porsche really hard to get its quality. Okay, you can drive it at 30%, 40%, 50%, and you feel that quality of that race, sorry, sports car chassis and that mid-engine flow. You know, it's really unique compared to a car. So in that perspective, you get a very unique driving experience. But for the M2 competition, for you to really get your money's worth and feel like whoa like that's where the M car is really like you know shining in its uh you know, all its glory and all its you know the technological efforts the tuning efforts of this car it's really at the limit and uh if you're not prepared to go there and uh if you haven't taken classes you it, you kind of waste the whole M car dynamics that requires some sort of skill and some sort of uh you know, confidence to drive the car that way. But when you do, it's extremely rewarding. Now if you don't, you just drive the car with the nose. Not that is a bad thing, but it just doesn't, you know, it's like you're, you know, you you, you pay for a nice steak, but you're you know, not able to eat the meat because, you know, you're not, you, you can't eat beef <laughs> and you eat everything else. Then you kind of waste the whole thing. The whole purpose of having the meal is to have the steak. Just like the M2, the whole purpose of getting the M2 competition is to to experience what the M car does really well. The chassis tuning. Okay, so we are right now stuck in the traffic, so there's no longer uh, time to do talk and drive. But what we can do is uh, do a little summary of the driving experience, and then we'll move on to a nice place where I can walk you around the car, the exterior, the interior. What do I think about it? And then we do the summary of this little vlog review of my uh, three months ownership of the M2 competition. But as a driving experience, I really like this car. I mean, on a personal level, it does have uh, what I need as something that's really engaging because you have to really you know, engage yourself with this car and work with the car around the corners. I just love how the front is so dirty. Um, and there's so much ways to modulate yourself around the corner, you know, you have so many options mid-corner uh, It just has all the formulas for a driver's input and that's something that's very important You know, nowadays cars focus on just being fast, but the M2 competition remembers that 
people who, who buy these cars want something fun, want something that they can engage, want something they can, you know, be part of, like you can be part of the driving experience. You know, you have control, you have say over it, you know, you got your input to it. And I think that what makes that's what makes a good driver's car. For example, when you're diving into a corner and let's say you meet corner, you realize that a little bit of understeer. You can just straighten your wheels, hit the throttle, rotate the car with a little bit of oversteer. So easy to just do all of it. It's just so, so dynamic and it accepts the input. That's what I, I just love about the M2 competition, all right? All right, so uh, we're gonna be in traffic now. And um, once I get to a comfortable spot, then I'll walk around the car and uh, check out the exterior and the interior and some of this little video, okay? Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of fun driving the car and uh, conclusion, it's just a great driver's car. Welcomes a lot of input and the electronics doesn't get in the way, but the electronics enhances the driving experience. But it's one of the most engaging modern cars around. So yeah, it just ticks all the boxes all the boxes for being a great driver's car okay so let's come to the exterior first um, now most of it is standard m2 flare but the one thing that really uh, for me makes a big difference between uh, the m2 and the m2 competition and just enhances the m2 look is the front grille now the m2 competition has a bit of a sharper grille over here so it gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look Okay, versus the M2 which is a little bit more flat. I'll put a little picture for you to compare. Now when it comes to the lower end of the splitter, I like this little thing over here. It's a little bit more edgy, all right? So overall, the front of the M2 competition for me just feels just right, just feel more right. Okay, because look at that sharp edge coming down there. It's met with more sharper ages now this color is actually not white it's called a uh, hockenheim silver metallic so it's sort of more white but it has some sort of silver in it especially in the night time it looks a bit more dark than white you know so i do like that um, when it comes to the rims well um, a lot of mixed feelings with these rims not my favorite looking rims but i do like to keep my car stock so i kept them and they're very hard to clean okay but these are lightweight rims okay uh, when i was picking the rims up from the car to clean it, to coat it and stuff, it was really, really light as well. They're running 19 inch by stock. And uh, the front stock is 245s, but I switched it to 255s. I'll explain a bit later on, and the rear are running 265s, okay? So um, the reason I changed the front to 255s is two. Number one, uh, there were no more stock for the 245s, right? It's a long waiting list, and it's hard to find 245s. So I opted for the 255 width. Um, to get an immediate stock. But what I actually wanted that for as well is that one of the issues with the BMW M2 competition is that when you dive into the corner, sometimes you get a bit of understeer. Okay, but with the wider front, it remedies quite a lot of that. But as a result, it also makes the rear a bit more loose because when the front grips a little bit more, the rear tends to loosen itself a little bit more. Not for everyone, but I think it kind of enhances that driving dynamics that makes that crazy M car, the short, snappy wheelbase, okay? All right, so if you look at the rear, another thing I like about the M2 is they've actually made it wider with that fender, okay? So this fender uh, is not the same as the usual 2 Series, right? The M2 onwards versus the M2 35i, you actually have a wider fender flare on the rear to fit wider tires okay uh, now for brakes if you can find this out there which you're looking for m2 competition look for the upgraded brakes uh, this one i feel that it can have better braking power but going uphill uh, so it's actually okay right if you're going to track the car then you probably want those brakes on the rear quite standard but because of the wide fender flares it just looks so squat look at that just lovely okay so uh, um, everything here is stock including this little uh, arrow but what I did was um, I actually used Expel's ultimate plus black right so when you wrap it it gives you protection and gives you a different change of color as well right give it a little bit more dimension on the rear okay uh, on the exhaust side we have uh, four exhaust now I didn't mod any of the exhaust but uh, 
this is not the best sounding M car. The S55 hasn't been always the best orchestra, you know. So I don't don't want to mod it because it's my daily. It's muted enough to for me to drive it around. And uh, what I do really want is more of the driving dynamics. So I just leave that alone, right? I don't have much opinion about uh, modifying the exhaust. So that's something you got to decide on your own. But for me, it's my daily, so I want it to be muted. Okay. Oh yeah, you get this uh, really cool um, M. Uh, mirrors as well, which I don't think you have it on the M2. Okay, but it's a simple mod, you can change that on the M2 as well. Right? And same thing like the rear, this thing is uh, wrapped with uh, Xpel's Ultimate Plus Black. So they give you that little more black and white look. Let's go into the interior. Now, some people might say, Thomas, hey, you have no comfort access <laughs> for a car of this price. But actually, the truth is, you know, you don't buy this car for you no know, small things like that. You buy the car because you want to enjoy its driving experience. So for me, it doesn't really matter. You know? And same goes for the seat. I actually have, uh, you know, it's actually all non-electronic. So it's all manual. In fact, I like it better because I can shift back and forth faster if I want to come out of the car. Okay. So um, it's a coupe. Opening is pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, the interior is something that is really surprising. Now, not a lot of people know this, but the M2 and the F20 chassis or the F87 chassis actually is very practical. Now, check this out. That's my sitting position in front. I'm six foot, sorry, I wish I was six foot, but <laughs> I'm 173 cm or roughly around five foot seven. And uh, check this out. I got ample room space for my leg, right? Now, the only downside is that these seats are pretty large so it does block a lot of the view over here and the seats here are a bit more up front upright so you have to sit up a little bit more on the rear but in the rear it's not exactly what you call um, small in fact this is larger than the uh, 8 series rear okay got a little compartment over here and you got even an armrest over here so that you can ride in the rear now is it comfortable Nah, I wouldn't put it in the space of what we call comfortable. But I could probably do this uh, as a, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes trip in the city. So it's actually usable. The rear seats are something that you can use. That's something I can conclude. Right? You even got a rear air cons for the rear passengers. Very accommodating for rear seats. Okay? Being a performance coupe. And the other thing that I think is really great about this car I'll come back to the interior in a moment. It's actually the boot space. It's huge for a coupe. I mean, it's, it's, it's really big. Look at that. And you can fold down your seats and you start moving things around. Okay. Very, very practical. I had the M235i before. Um, this thing, it's not to say huge, but very usable. You can use this as your daily car. Now, if you have kids and stuff, it's a different story. I don't have kids, so I can't really comment much about it, okay? But, you know, it's actually usable. Now, the side pockets, they are great. You can carry your bottle of water here, right? Uh, this is 500 ml. It's in just nice over here. And what I like about M cars, oh, sorry, BMWs, is that they have this compartment to put your smart tag or your wallets. So it doesn't slide around, all right? And you can conceal your smart tag. It's a really good touch. I wish more, I wish more automakers do this right and what we like about this as well is at night when you turn on the car you can see this actually turning on bright so from the exterior you can see the m2 lights are going on okay all right let's go and check out the interior a little bit more now the spec i have on the interior are actually this um, exposed carbon now normally you get carbon so you get the piano black which i don't like because it just scratches up you know, it looks ugly and, you know, ah, fingerprints and dust and all. It just exposes all of that. But this one over here is way easier to take care of. Okay? And I think it's just a lot more special. Okay. Um, I drive straightforward. Okay. Um, cup holders. You know, it's, everything is very practical and usable. Very spartan. Very simple. And uh, practical interior. Oh, by the way, check this out. There's a M2 competition to remind you that it's a special car when you open up the door, okay? <laughs> now, the interior is not what we say a 
luxurious, right? It's actually quite basic. Even the materials are not that nice. I would dare say that even the Volkswagen Golf has better fit and finish than the M2 competition, right? But hey, this is the entry-level sports car, and what you really want is this drivetrain, um, the drivetrain, the just the chassis, the way it drives, the steering rack, all of that just ticks the box. Are just as good as it gets for its platform. So this is my little review of the BMW M2 competition. And for me, it just ticks all the boxes as a great daily car and the occasional fun weekend car, right? It's small, it's dirty, it's easy to maneuver, great visibility, great boot space, um, great uh, cabin space. I mean, not great, but good enough, right? And I can do my long distance journey and, you know, it just ticks all the boxes. And even for me, the looks is a great one because it's, it's kind of discreet, doesn't shout, and I just blend in. And that's a big plus for me. But for you who are watching this video, if you're probably considering an M2 competition, would it be a car suitable for you? So I want to just scrutinize a little bit and uh, talk about the conclusion of the M2 competition and uh, are there better cars out there to consider if you have the money for this car? Well, I think for you to get your money's worth of the BMW M2 competition, you must be willing to push your car a little bit more. You got to take it to uh, seven tenths or eight tenths of its limit. And that's when you only start to feel you get your money's worth. With its M differential, with the suspension, um, all of that really starts to shine only closer to its limit. But you must be willing to go there with the car. But if you don't, then you feel like, well, great engine, you know, suspension is nice and firm. It turns when I want it to turn. But that's pretty much it, okay? So if you're not willing to take your car that far, not willing to learn with your car, grow with your car, maybe the M2 competition is not for you. In fact, I think there are much more accomplished choices out there, specifically the Porsche 718, even the 2.0. It's so accomplished. It does everything very, very well. It's a good sense of occasion. It looks nice, right? Okay, it's a mid-engine sports car. Gives you that driving feeling that is not similar to a front engine car which most normal cars are right and you don't have to drive the 718 close to its limit or push it really hard to feel like you got your money's worth even at three tenths four tenths or half of the car's capacity you feel the Porsche is like wow this is a great car for the M2 competition you gotta push it you gotta take it over there I guess it depends on you if you're not willing to take the car far maybe this car is not for you what is it great for this car then I think as a weekend car, it also lacks that sense of occasion because it looks just sort of like a BMW. The language looks very similar to a 3 Series. I know there are distinguished differences for car guys like us, but you know, as an impression, it doesn't give us like, whoa. It's... Whereas if you get a Porsche 718, for example, if you look to a normal sedan or SUV, you say like, wow, that's a big change. This car doesn't have it. Okay, so I think in that department, the 718 is a way more accomplished car than the BMW M2 competition. But why did I choose this car? Well, not only because I have the Porsche Boxer Spider, but I do like an M car in my life. Um, I do like a car that allows me to put a lot of inputs, let me be naughty as well, and that really short wheelbase. So snappy, so playful. Uh, it's a lot of work with the car, but for me, that's what makes the car really, really fun. And as I said earlier, I can just drive this anywhere and everywhere. Right, that's what I like about this car over here. Okay. Any regrets owning this car? Absolutely not. Is it familiar? Yeah. But it still allows me to learn and grow with this car. Power plant is just brutally <laughs> powerful, right? And uh, that chassis setup is just incredible. Incredible, incredible. Okay. So that's my review. I hope it gives you uh, some clarity, it gives you some inspiration or some sort for you to decide whether you want to get the M2 competition or not, right? If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more contents in the future. And let me know in the comments below what you think about the M2 competition, alright? And uh, if you enjoy this format of a review, please let me know in the comments below so I can do more of these reviews for you guys, alright? Till then, love you guys, keep it 100% and uh, peace out.